hard to make that decision. It really shows your dedication to your goals and what you wanted to achieve. So last week we talked about routines, goals, and habits. And we kind of talked about the importance of having a good routine set in place to reach those goals that you set. We talked about the four steps you go through when processing information and why it's why it's key to be consistent within your routines to reach that unconscious competence level. And so today we have Aaliyah and Lupita and they're gonna share how to create good habits and how to implement those into your life, the science and the psychology behind them. And so Lupita and Aaliyah have taught me so much since I've known them. I met them as soon as I kind of came into this and I was introduced to them and Aaliyah is always bringing the energy. She knows how to pump us up and it's been absolutely incredible with you. And Lupita is always keeping Aaliyah in line and Aaliyah and I in check and always coming with the information. So they're going to share some of that information today. They got it all prepared for you guys. And so I hope you enjoy. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here on a Friday night. Um, for those who don't know me, my name is Lupita Capote. I live in, in Illinois, and I've been in this industry for about a little bit over a year. Um, a few years back, I realized that I wanted to do something different with my life. I felt like I was meant to help others, and I know, and I know that I'm meant to do more. Um, and at one of my lowest points in life, I ended up coming across this industry with trading and network marketing. And so far, it's been an amazing journey. I, I've had my ups and downs like everybody else has. Um, but my why is what keeps me going. And for those who don't know, my why is my mom, my family. I want to retire my mom and help my family here and in Mexico. And I am just really happy to be here with you guys, uh, sharing some knowledge. Um, so like Zena said, last week we talked about goals, systems, and habits. And I hope everybody sets goals here. Um, so in order, in order to achieve your goals, you need to create a system. And in order to have a good system, you need to have good habits. So how do you create good habits? I recommend everybody here to write these notes. Um, everything that I'm going to talk about is from the book, The Atomic Habits by James Clear. And I'm gonna start by talking about the science of how habits work. And um, the process of building a habit can be divided into four steps. That's gonna be um, the Q, which is uh, it spells C-U-E, and that is a signal or indication. Uh, number two is craving. Number three is response. And number four is reward. So we're going to start with number one, which is Q. So the Q triggers your brain to initiate a behavior. And number two is cravings. Cravings are the motivational force behind every habit. Without craving a change, we have no reason to act. What you crave is not the habit, but the change. And for example, um, you do not crave smoking a cigarette, but you crave the feeling of relief it provides. Uh, number three is response, and that's the actual habit performed. Number four is reward, the end goal of every habit. If you guys need me to repeat that, uh, let me know in the chats, in the chat. If not, I'll just write them down. Um, but if that if that sounded a little bit confusing, Ali's gonna give you some examples so you have a little bit of an understanding of what I'm talking about. Um, Ali, you can share your examples. Uh, I'm over here geeking. Sorry, guys. You probably see me on the camera. Uh, okay. Well. Uh, as Lupita was saying, I'm going to go into some examples, but for people who don't know me, I am Aaliyah Toller. I'm 23 years old, and I've been in this industry for almost a year, uh, right? Like, driven, driven's my home. I am so happy and grateful to be here, can lead people, empower women, just really show people 
what what we're here to do, what what their purpose is. You know, there's more to life than just working a job. So that's really, really why I'm here. And I really just want to help everybody grow and succeed and see, like, uh, be able to... <laughs> uh be able to crush all their goals and where they want to live so uh with that being said i'm going to show some examples of how to create the habit uh, as what lupita was saying there's four steps so if you didn't write them down i'll say them again the first one was a cue so it's a signal and then the second is a craving and the third is the response and the fourth is reward so i'm sure Every single one of you have experienced this example. So say you start talking to someone new, someone you have interest in, and um, you get you get a Snapchat notification, you get the notification on your phone. So right there, that's that's the cue, that's the signal. You now the craving is you want to read the message. So you go into your phone, you half swipe the message because you know, this, this is someone that you're interested. You don't want to reply too quickly. So you just half swipe the message and you wait 30 minutes. Okay. Well, after you wait 30 minutes, the response comes with waiting. And then when you reply after 30 minutes, that's the reward. So I am going to show you another example. Not sure if, you know, you've watch the office i'm not really big into the office but i do have a short clip from the office so i'm going to show you here this example and after the short clip i will go into little details about that oh, damn that's another file i have to reboot again hey dwight do you want an altoid what do you think? In school, we learned about this scientist who trained dogs to salivate at the sound of a bell by feeding them whenever a bell rang. So for the past couple weeks, I've been conducting a similar experiment. <clears throat> Dwight, more Altoid. Okay. Altoid? Sure. Mintwine? Mintwine? Yes. <laughs> what are you doing? I... What? I don't know. I... Well, my mouth tastes so bad all of a sudden. Well... Okay, so yeah, haha, that was funny. Okay. Um <laughs> so as the as as that example, so the cue, the signal was the noise, the the noise of the computer when Jim was pressing the computer. Well, then the craving was Dwight wanted the mint. So he put his hand out. And then once he got the mint, he ate it. That was the reward. So as you can see, more as times went on, he was putting his hand on and he's like, what are you doing? Well, he wanted the mint. So that's what he was expecting. So that's just an exam another example to show you on how to create a habit. So Lupita is going to go into sharing a two formulas that will help you implement new habits into your daily routine. Yes. Um, so I'm going to share with you two formulas that best... Uh, this is the best way to, to start a new habit. And number one is implementation intention. This is a plan you make before uh, beforehand about when and where to act. So the formula is, and I write this down, is um, I will behavior at time in location. So you're creating a plan for when and where you will perform a new habit. And then Ellie is going to show you some examples of this as well. Okay, thank you. All right, so as Lupita was saying, I'm going to show you here a couple of examples. So the I will was the behavior, and then she said the time 
and the location. So I will meditate is the behavior. One minute at 7 a.m. is the time. And then in my kitchen is the location. So I will meditate one minute at 7 a.m. in my kitchen. So that's what she's kind of explaining. And then I have another example. I will study Forex, which is the behavior. One hour at 8 a.m. is the time. And then in my office is the location. I will study Forex one hour at 8 a.m. in my office. So I'm going to show, I'm going to go a little bit uh, deeper into the a study that was actually done. That was actually done. And it's three reasons why you shouldn't study in your bedroom or even on your bed. So the, the first reason is studying in your bed limits focus. The comfort of your pillows, the comfort of your room, the comfort of the blankets, everything on your bed just limits focus. You don't want to put yourself in a position where you're going to fail from the start. So don't even put yourself there. And then also, your bed doesn't make you lose focus, like I was saying. Sometimes it's the things in your room. It could be pictures on your wall. It could be your TV. It could be anything in your room that could help, like, that could make you lose focus. So my best, my best thing to tell people is you should have an own, your own separate room or somewhere where you have a desk and a chair where you can do your work and you can study. You're going to be more focused than if you do it in your room or more or less on your bed. The best, the better option is to get a standing desk because our bodies aren't meant to be sitting all day in a desk. The second reason, so the first reason was it limits focus. The second was it decreases productivity. So the lack of space that you have, the lack of organization, this, this is hard. How are you supposed to put all your notebooks, your books, whatever you have, your papers, your pens, your pencils, your notepads? How are you supposed to lay that all out on your bed and try to be organized that way? You have to have a space where you have everything organized. So organization is, is key. And also, like I was saying about having a standing desk or even standing doing work, it, it sends blood flow oxygen to your brain. You're not, your our bodies aren't meant to be sitting all day. So if you can even get up and prop your prop your computer up on your dresser, if you're able to do that for an hour, that that's even helping you, you know, stand up and help your body to move around a little bit than just sitting down for 10 hours, because that can really that that has a lot of effect on your body. You wouldn't think it does, but it does. So, like I said, the first was limits focus, decreases productivity, and then the third is it hurts sleep. So our beds are meant, our, our rooms, they're meant for a place for rest. That's where we get our rest so we can refuel for the next day. So our our bodies need adequate sleep to stay healthy, to relieve stress, to handle stress, and to perform each and every day at our best. So if you didn't write those down, I can say them again. The first reason is the, it limits focus. The second is it decreases productivity. And the third is it, third is it hurts sleep. So Lupita is now going to show you another formula on how to implement a new habit from a current habit. Take it away, girl. Thank you, Ellie. Um, before I share the second formula, I just want to talk a little bit a little bit about my experience with this. Um, so I have everything in my room, and it's been a little it's been a struggle to actually study in my bedroom, um, because my bed is literally behind me. And what I did is I study in the kitchen now because my TV is here, everything's here, my cats are always in my room. So I have a lot of distractions and um, I even leave my phone in my room just so I can actually concentrate and, you know, study and or read or whatever I have to do. Um, but I'm going to share with you the second formula. And this is called the habit stacking. This is another way to start a new habit. So you identify a current habit you already do and stack it and stack the new habits on top of it. And then um, Ellie's gonna share, share some examples as well of how this formula looks like. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't even say the formula, did I? 
No, I didn't. Um, so the the stacking formula is after current habit, I will new habit. So go ahead, Ellie. Okay, thank you. So uh, as she said, we're gonna habit stacking. So you're gonna take your current habit that you're doing right now and you wanna implement a new habit. So the example that I used with the meditation, with the I will meditate was the behavior. One minute at 7 a.m. was the time. And then the location was my kitchen. So I'm gonna use med meditation as the example. So meditation, after I pour my cup of coffee each morning, I will meditate for one minute. You are stating that after you pour your cup of coffee, you are going to implement your new habit from your current habit. So eventually you're going to just meditate every single morning because it's just going to be a new habit that you implement, you Im implemented. Um, <clears throat> oh, sorry. After I write, this is another example. After I write my to-do list, for the day, I will immediately do the first task. You are stating that you are going to immediately take initiative to do the first task. That's the new new habit that you're implementing. So habits are automatically done. Tasks we do subconsciously, like walking, talking, high-fiving. When a behavior is repeated enough, it uh, a habit is formed. So I really, really challenge each and every single one of you to make a list of your current habits and your new habits and implement them in your everyday life. That's how a system is formed. So that, that's all I got tonight. Thank you everybody for hopping on. I know Zena's gonna close, out, close it out here, but appreciate all of you. Have a wonderful night. Thank you, Ali and Lupita. Drop some ones in the chat for these two women. They did absolutely amazing sharing this info for you guys, and they've shown incredible growth in these last two months, especially since we started doing these calls. Yes, love the chats. Awesome, awesome, awesome. They did so good tonight. I don't know if you guys realize how like much effort and how much work these two have put into these calls, especially since we started these. I mean, hours of planning hours making sure that everything is set up and that you guys will get so much value out of these calls. We want to make sure that you guys can implement these into your daily lives. And so it's been absolutely incredible doing these calls with you guys. And I hope you have a safe Friday night, especially since it's Friday the 13th. So have a great weekend and we will see you next Friday. See you Let's next go! Friday. Yeah. <laughs>